obviously somebody had stolen the car to go bury something that would fit in a car trunk. So I've mentioned my wife at the time several times on this channel and uh, wife at the time had a grandmother named Ethel and we had some really funny experiences with Ethel and I'm going to share a couple of those today. Now Ethel was a wonderful lady. She was sweet. She was everything you'd want in a grandmother. But you know, as we all do, you know, as age progresses, you become a little forgetful, you become a little less aware. And we had a few funny experiences with Ethel that really just showed what a good heart she had. Wife of the time and I had gone out of town for the weekend, gone down to the coast, not far. And we got a frantic call from her mother, my mother-in-law, that Ethel had called her and claimed she'd had a stroke. So, oh my God, that's, that's really hard, you know, but she called like she was on the phone. I said, well, oh my God, you know, where you called the ambulance? She goes, I'm going over there right now. I was like, well, okay, let us know, you know, what's going on. So of course we immediately canceled our plans, you know, just got in the car and just, you know, early cannonball, just as fast as we could go get back to where they live back here in Georgia. We're, we're trying to call you know, his early cell phones, but we're trying to call her mother and we can't get a word in, you know, we don't know what's going on. We're thinking the worst and you know, we, we get close enough. We, you know, we get on the phone, you know, well, okay, what hospital are you at? Well, we're still at her house. Like, what are you doing at her house? You know, so we go flying into her neighborhood. And as soon as we pulled up, first thing I noticed is that Mabel's car, you know, the typical grandmother car, she had a nice big four door Oldsmobile from the eighties and had, you know, 12,000 miles on it. Cause she'd owned it for 25 years and drove it to church once a Sunday, but uh, the, the car is gone. We raced in the house. You know, my mother-in-law was there with Ethel. Ethel's very upset still. You know, I've had a stroke. I've had a stroke. She keeps saying it over and over again. She's very alarmed. I'm looking for visible signs of a stroke. She doesn't seem to be exhibiting any kind of palsy or anything like that. Mother-in-law was not the most calming person. So, uh, you know, I kind of pull her off to the side and I sit down with Ethel. I'm like, okay, Ethel, why do you think you've had a stroke? And of course, she's just hysterical thinking that she's had some mental issue or she can't remember something. She goes, I've had a stroke. I, I drove my car somewhere and parked it and walked home and I can't remember what I did with my car. And I look outside again, just for my own mind to confirm, yes, the car is indeed gone. And I said, Ethel, you can't even walk to the mailbox. I don't think you had a stroke. I think somebody stole your car. And immediately this calm just kind of washed over her and she kind of goes, oh, I hadn't thought about that. Well, why would somebody do that? And of course, that just immediate relief. I don't care about the car, but immediate relief that she's physically okay. You know, she was just so alarmed that she got up to get in her car to go somewhere and her car was gone. And it having such a good heart never even crossed her mind. Somebody would have stolen her Oldsmobile. She just assumed she had driven it to church or the grocery store and forgot and somehow walked home. So crisis averted. Of course, we report the car stolen and, uh, you know, she you know, kept all the old lady things in the car you'd have, the little crocheted Kleenex box and the little booster seat she would sit on so she could see over, you know, she, she's driving like this, you know, so she could see up over the dashboard and, and her Bible, which she always kept in the car and it had a nice little zipper, you know, case for her Bible. She'd had this Bible for all her life. Well, report the car stolen. Uh, it wasn't two days goes by and we get a call. They found the car. Now, the car is south of there, kind of down in middle Georgia, and the car was found on the side of the road out of gas. All the things inside, her umbrella, her Kleenex box, all her little booster seat, all that stuff was gone from the car, been thrown out, but the Bible was still in the car. Whoever stole it was not going to throw out a Bible. Bible's still in the car. There are four muddy boot prints in the four seats of the car. Everything in the trunk was gone, including the spare tire, but there were two dirty shovels in the trunk. Obviously, somebody had stolen the car to go bury something that would fit in a car trunk and had completed that process, got their boots dirty, left the trunk, ran the car to gas and just ditched it and kept walking. So, of course, we get the car back and even got to keep the shovels. So anyway, crisis averted, no stroke, got the car back. Car was in perfect shape otherwise, other than a Kleenex box missing. So we got a new booster seat. We're back in the road. A couple months go by, maybe a year, and it's some holiday or something. I can't remember, Easter or something like that. And wife at the time and I are going to go to the mother-in-law's house. Ethel's going to drive out and meet us there for lunch. 
And she pulls up in the driveway as she always did. And she gets out of the car. And, you know, of course, she's this big. She's out of the car and she's kind of stomping in the house and she's mad. She's agitated. And, you know, Ethel didn't get agitated about much at all, you know. And so I'm like, well, you know, Ethel, what's going on? She goes, all those people on that new Carter Daniel Parkway are just the rudest people. I'm never driving over there again. Now, what she was referring to was this had previously been a two lane road that had, you know, grown a lot of shopping centers up around the little grocery store she used to go to. And they had made it one of those parkway things with the two lanes, with the little row of crepe myrtles down the middle, and another two lanes on the other side. And she said, I, I turned out of that grocery store and every one of those cars on that road was just honking their horn and flashing their lights at me. And they just were just rude drivers and they were all just flashing lights and honking horns. And they did it all the way till I got back on the main road. I'm never going over there again. Of course, I look over at wife at the time and I, and, you know, she looks back at me and obviously Ethel has taken a left out of the grocery store as she always did, but now it's oncoming traffic, didn't go over to the second road, didn't even cross her mind after 122 years of driving this same road, didn't even cross her mind that traffic would be different. And so she had just Ronin style, just zigzag between all these cars and miraculously didn't get hurt. And she was a one of a lady and that Bible must have helped her, but you know, God looked over her that day. So she did not get injured, but that was about the time we were deciding that maybe Ethel didn't need to be driving. Months go by again. And there were a couple other minor incidences and Ethel moved into an assisted living and, and it was a great place. And she really loved being there made a lot of friends and she was real happy there, but she wanted to take her car out there with her in case she wanted to go somewhere. And of course this was not a good idea, but in the battle of the wheels, grandmother-in-law often win. So Ethel's got the car out there and she'd promised she wouldn't drive it. She just, you know, her husband had always taught her to run a car regularly. So, you know, she said, I'm just going to go out there once a week. I'm going to crank the car. I'm not going to go anywhere. I'm just going to crank the car and just run it a little bit. And it'll just make me feel more at peace to have my car there. I'll feel a little more like I have my freedom still. And, and I respected that. So we let that fly. It wasn't about a week goes by that we're down there visiting mother-in-law and we get a call that Ethel had gone somewhere out for a spin out of the hair salon, something like that, but had driven out and gone over some median and kind of seesawed the Oldsmobile over some median and it had to be towed off and tore up the muffler a few things. Car was okay, but you know, we've reached that point where, you know, Ethel, we love you, but it's not safe for you to be driving on the road how about let's stop driving the car? And of course she didn't want to give up the car and she promised that was a one-time thing and that she was not going to go anywhere. But the only way she would concede to not driving is if we still let her keep the car out there. We didn't want to have another incident similar to the previous one. So I tried to think, how can I let her keep her car and crank it, but not have her go anywhere? So what we did is we parked the car. I pulled it into like a parking space where there was a planter in the front. She couldn't go forward. And I got his in the 80s Oldsmobile, very simple wiring. So I took a, a constant on relay. Now, normally relays off and you hit a switch and it closes, light comes on. These work the opposite. It's on unless you hit it with a signal and then it shuts off whatever it is. So I wired that relay into the ignition circuit and then I hooked the switch to the reverse lights. So she could go out there, crank up the car. She could rev the engine. She could floor it, do whatever she wanted to do. But the moment she put it in reverse and those lights came on, cut the car off. Now, I didn't tell her I did that, and I put a little override switch on it, so if I needed to take it to go get oil change or whatever I wanted to do to it, I could still drive it. But I didn't tell her about the switch and anything like that. I just wanted to wait and see how long it happened. Not two days go by, I get a phone call from Ethel. I think something's wrong with my car. I was like, Ethel, what makes you think that? Well, I went out to crank it up, and I cranked it, and it just went dead on me. I was like, well, what happened when it went dead? Not a thing. I was just sitting there running the engine like I told you I would, and it just went dead. I said, it didn't go dead when you put it in reverse by chance, did it? There's a little pause. and Well, I might have gone through the gears just to make sure they still worked. I said, well, well, Ethel, I, I, I'll have a look at that, but, but I think there might be something wrong with the car. Maybe it's best we don't go anywhere in the car. You just crank it and run it from now on. And yeah, and that blew over and she finally gave up her keys and quit driving. And all of us being car people, we all love to drive, but there will unfortunately be some day that all of us drives our last. And for Ethel, this was this was her time. But thankfully, uh, her good spirit and that Bible kept her safe through all those adventures. And we never had to test the 
reverse kill switch again. We're here with a very special LaFerrari and we've got a very special deal for you, our VinWiki audience today from Glossit. Now last year, too many of you responded and you broke his website and his fulfillment process. So we've had to limit this one to just 5,000 units. But if you respond now, you're going to get their $150 graphene ceramic coating along with a $50 gloss enhancer detail spray to make the application easier than ever along with an applicator all for just $69.99. Now guys, we made this kit user friendly and not only did we test it on a LaFerrari, but we tested it on, on Fords or regular cars. And Ed will tell you with car track, He's put this through the paces. Even on a rebuilt title, high mileage piece of junk that I found somewhere on Auto Tempest, it brings it back to look at least almost as good as this. So if it works for this car and Rich can use it on everything, I'm sure you can use it in your garage just like I do. So check them out now at the link in the description below. And for just $69.99, get the best package of products we've ever been able to offer from Glossit.